Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, whether you're brand new or you've been with me since day one. Today I need a thank you card for somebody in my life that really likes orange. I don't have a lot of orange. I mean, I could get out any of my mixed media supplies and go through them. In a set of paints, there's always gonna be orange. There might be an orange and scribble sticks. So I started looking around because you know how tidy I am. And I found this piece of paper. I don't know, maybe we made this in a video. This is one of my mop-up papers. It has quite a bit of orange. Looks like I probably had some gold and some of that real nice yellow textury paint that I like. So what I thought I would do is hit this with some of these, I'll take the tags off them so you can see them, iridescent inks that I got at the Hobby Lobby sale. I mean, I, that's that sale is like things legends are made of. Okay, this was my first time actually hitting it and it's all I can do not to drive across town every couple of hours or every day and see what's going on. But the reality of it is, I'm supposed to be cleaning my room. I'm like a little kid. I haven't used these inks before. I don't know anything about them. And honestly, I can't remember what paper this is. I was thinking about getting out a piece of watercolor and trying this, but then I found this. So what I'm thinking is, Put some more color on here, make it fun, then let it dry, and I might as well make a couple cards while I'm at it. If you take an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and you just play with it, you can end up with supplies for a bunch of cards. I didn't do these on film because I was at a friend's house, but uh, you can see it, especially in the blue and green ones. These were a piece of paper that I inked and embossed on, and then I cut up, and then I inked the edges and put tape. They're still UFOs, but they're pretty. Now I need some that are orangey. If this one backfires, I'll use these. I'm, I'm not in love with these. I mean, they're okay. It was Distress Oxides, maybe not my colors. I was at a friend's house who's very she was one of the people I started my channel for. She's very early in stamping and she had a bunch of ink pads and was super excited and we got them out. They were the oldest ink pads I've ever, I've ever seen. I've never seen an ink pad that dries up before the seal is broken. So my guess is a decade or two ago, she thought I'm going to try paper crafting and then got sidetracked. So I'm just putting a bunch of ink on there and I want it to run. And I think, I don't know, some of you might freak out when I do this. I also can't remember what mediums are on this page, if it's paint or ink or whatever. I want it to get to the edges pretty well because if we're gonna follow that model like the last one, the edges, so right here and right here will show a lot. I didn't use my software to see if I stay in camera. Sorry, you guys, I just remembered, but I'll try. But anyway, the edges will show quite a bit, so we need to make sure there's color there. Otherwise, all of this amazingness will be covered up. So that might be something that I wanna think about too. Maybe on this one, I won't do it that way. What if we hit it with some of this nickel too? The only other one I have is pink, and then I have a black. This one is not mixed. Um, the other two I've done a better job mixing. This one's been really, really, really stubborn. So my guess is I'll get the color, but I might not get the iridescence, which, yeah, I'm okay with that. We'll just come in at a different angle. I don't really want the whole project to be um, symmetrical or anything. The friend that I'm making this for, she likes things wild. She's like colors and patterns, and uh, she one of her favorite things is animal prints. So I definitely, if I'm making something for someone that I know, it's it helps a lot because you know what their style is and what they like. Okay, so now I'm getting the two inks mixing, and I really like that. I, I'm toying with the idea of adding water, but I don't think I want to dilute it. But I am going to get some other kind of, here we go, let's use, ooh. Well, this is probably Distress Oxide. It's not a permanent ink, so if we mop that up, we might mix, but we'll try it. What do we have to lose? Oh, there's some cats on the back. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that piece of paper, we're gonna set that aside and I'm sure we'll use that for some other project. I like this better now. I do want to add a little more of the copper in the corners. And we'll just do them one at a time so that I can get it to move around. 
sometimes I have, oh, today's a mixed media day, like I'm doing gel plate printing later with my friend. And sometimes I have, oh, today's a card making day, but they can meet in the middle. Don't be shy, anything that you have. The only trick is you can't make a card out of something like this while it's still wet, right? So in our cards, we're very picky. This one I'm getting a lot of air bubbles in, probably because I shook it too much. But all of your supplies can cross over. It's just a matter of waiting for dry time, which is why I end up with so many UFOs, unfinished objects. I have like three journals out in the shop that I put the covers, laid them out, and then, you know, they needed to dry, so I left. And I don't know about your significant other. I'm going to try this paper. This was from a swap. I don't know what the weight is. I'm going to guess 65 pound. Um, but my significant other is pretty patient. Like he goes into the shop and he looks around and he just doesn't say a word. And let me tell you, it it's a hot mess in there. That is going to be fun. So I'll let this dry. I don't know if the inks maintain that look of texture. I mean, it looks like texture. I think it's just where the iridescent stuff pools up. Can you see how cool that is? So these will be fun later. I think this one would be fun to hit with some warm light colors and let all that shine. Okay, this is an ugly mess, right? But I think I like it. What I'm trying to decide is if I want to hit it with water at all to add back some white space. I don't think I do. I think I want to leave it. It's getting a little muddy and it'll get muddier. All of those tracks will run if I hit it with water. So first I'm going to put the inks, the lids on the inks. You saw that video. Oh my gosh. I'm going to let this dry and then what I'll do is I'm going to hit these edges probably before I take it apart because I have such a big uh, eight inch run here. I'm going to hit the edges with some orange paint. I'm going to go through my paints and try and bring orange into it a little more. Okay, friends, I forgot to turn the camera on for you, but I dried that paper, ironed it, and found some orange scribble stick and orange embroidery floss, and I'm putting it all together. I used a bit of beacons for the embroidery floss, then I just decided to use my art glitter glue because I can see it better, and it's less messy for me. And the thank you was just a sticker that was white and I put some orange scribble stick on it to kind of tie it in and put it on a circle of black paper and a circle of craft packaging that you see there. So just a circle punch. I was just trying to bring it all together and then I just took a black pen and put that rectangle border around the edge. So this way you get to see the finished product too. And the light, I didn't have all my lights on like I should have, but you can see the iridescence. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.